This is Dr. Michael Tapper from Lenox Hill Hospital in New York City. And today I have the opportunity of interviewing Dr. Heather Bradley from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, who gave a very important talk this morning on the second day of the conference on increased HIV suppression among U.S. adults receiving medical care between 2009 and 2013. Dr. Bradley, I wonder if you'd be willing to just briefly summarize the contents of your important presentation. Sure. So we used CDC data from the Medical Monitoring Project to look at trends over time in viral suppression among adults receiving HIV clinical care between 2009 and 2013. We did see significant increases in both viral suppression at last test in the previous 12 months and sustained viral suppression at all tests over 12 months. So viral suppression at last test increased from 72% to 80% among adults in care, again, and sustained viral suppression increased from 58% to 68%. So one thing that was really encouraging about this study is that we looked at these findings among demographic subgroups, and we actually found that the largest increases were among the groups with the lowest levels of viral suppression in 2009. So we saw large increases in suppression among the youngest age group, 18 to 29 year olds, and we also saw uh, higher than average increases among African Americans. Um, so this was very encouraging. We did look um, at increases in ART prescription during this time as well, and we found that overall, over five years, the percentage of adults that were prescribed ART medications um, increased from 89% to 94%. Um, again, the, the largest increases were among young people and again, African Americans. But we, um, we looked at sort of how, how much the increases in ART explained the increases in viral suppression. And we found that actually um, the increases in viral suppression were not entirely explained just by an increased number of people being prescribed drugs. And so we think, you know, there have probably also been improvements um, in the drug technologies, such as fixed dose uh, combinations, um, as well as uh, access to medications um, and adherence. So these findings are really encouraging in terms of our national goals of improving the health of uh, persons with HIV and also preventing new HIV infections. Yeah, very encouraging. This is a much broader picture than some of the earlier cohorts that looked at uh, overall population bases and acquisition and viral suppression in San Francisco, mm -hmm. subsequently in Vancouver, but those were a more homogeneous population, mm -hmm. San Francisco being largely men who had sex with men, Vancouver being largely substance abuse. I'm curious if you were able to break down uh, beyond the racial issues as to risk of transmission, M MSMs versus IV uh, drug abusers, uh, women versus men. Is there additional data on, on which groups are really benefiting from this change mm -hmm. and which may still be lagging behind? Sure. So we did, um, we did look at gender of sex partners as a subgroup and among MSM, so MSM make up about 50% of our population and so as expected the change among MSM and viral suppression was about what we saw in the overall population. But we actually saw slightly higher percentages of MSM who were virally suppressed at all time points. Um, but on but because they make up such a large part of our population, mm -hmm. it was very similar to overall. We did see larger increases among women than among men, but mm -hmm. women were also one of those groups with lower than average levels of viral suppression mm -hmm. in 2009. And so we think, you know, one of the reasons we really wanted to look at ART prescription over time is because we have had two very important changes in clinical guidelines um, during this five-year period. So one change uh, in 2009 to recommend um, ART for persons with CD4 counts uh, less than or equal to 500, and then um, an another change more recently to recommend ART, of course, for for everyone right. living with HIV. And so we wanted to see how some of these subgroups that were actually less likely to be prescribed ART previously were doing after these changes in guidelines. And we found, particularly among young people, um, that providers appear to be much more aggressively treating um, post the changes in guidelines and probably also you know, uh, in response to, to changes in the drugs themselves. And previous epidemiologic studies have suggested that uh, 
people in the South were probably more at risk uh, for HIV acquisition, perhaps slower to be treated. Did you look at geographic regions, both geographic regions across the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, such as California or New York, which are high incidence areas, versus the South? And did you look at rural versus urban populations? So that's a great question. If the medical monitoring project uh, includes data from, t from 23 independent jurisdictions, 17 of which are states and the others are cities within states. So we're actually designed to be able to produce these estimates at a, at a state level for the states that we sample. And we're actually working on getting those estimates out now, but no, that wasn't part of this analysis. That would be an interesting issue for a subsequent analysis or mm -hmm. for the states. Uh, you know, I assume that New York and California are pr amongst them. Uh, to look at individually because I think, again, if you get to certain areas, whether it's a question of access, whether it's a question of reluctance to mm -hmm. be, be treated, you may see some significant differences, for example, between rural and urban areas where people are maybe more reluctant or have less opportunities to seek out treatment. But it, it, it's, a, it's a fascinating study. It's very encouraging. Uh, I'd like to think that we as physicians are doing better jobs. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think that we're we're doing more universal HIV testing at different points uh, in the care spectrum. People are being tested earlier in, in HIV care. People are being tested earlier in general medical care, mm -hmm. along with you know current CDC guidelines to offer testing essentially to everyone. Absolutely. Um, and, and, and at least once, and for people who have repeated risk, to make sure that we're offering repeated testing if people are still doing, uh, having at-risk behaviors. We, didn't talk a lot about prevention efforts. And I think that's a, a, a big question as well, is how much can we ascribe your, to prevention versus active case finding and treatment? Your study would certainly suggest that at least some of it is due to active treatment or earlier treatment. The question is, particularly in some of these difficult access populations, minorities, the poor, mm -hmm. women, rural populations, are we getting far enough in terms of prevention efforts? We still see these disturbing outbreaks, such as the one that was reported in Croy last year in Indiana, mm -hmm. where you see these outbreaks of HIV disease, and of course in parallel hepatitis C disease as well. Right. Uh, I, that's an area that I'd like to hear a little bit more about. Sure, so certainly, you know, we have more work to do. I think at least in terms of CDC work, our work has become much more targeted in terms of reaching the hardest hit populations. We've been using a high impact prevention approach where um, the funding, of course, is based on, um, is based on sort of HIV prevalence in, in populations around the country. And um, we've done a lot of work around disseminating uh, best practices, interventions that are research driven they're scalable and implementing those interventions, not singularly, but as combination prevention interventions um, in, in the areas and among the populations that need them most. And so we'll continue to do that. But, um, but certainly we do have more work to do. And I think for the physician, you know, or clinician community, this is, a, this is definitely something to celebrate. I think people are doing a great um, are doing a great job as per our data in aggressively treating and following the guidelines, but um, we, you know we can't lose sight of the ultimate goal, which is population viral suppression. Um, and we do have more work to do, and we need to continue to focus on those populations that that have lower than average levels of suppression. Great work. Keep up the good work, and keep up the improvements that we're starting to see due to your efforts and due to the availability of easier to take combinations and more potent drugs. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.